children's author, NHL player, and hat trick hero at long last for Zach Hyman, who gets the job done for the first time in his career this evening against the Nashville Predators, an emphatic 6-3 victory for the Edmonton Oilers. Folks, this is Dolan TV. Good evening and welcome back to another edition of post-game discussions here on the channel today. Come on, I don't need to deviate from the regular formula tonight. Yeah, no indeed, we have a victory to talk about and a game worth talking about. Here's the tale of a back-to-back -back that is definitely one of those situations for the Oilers of... Well, we didn't get him in the first one, but we sure dang got him in the second one. And the Oilers end up taking home a split in the Minnesota-Nashville back-to-back as they beat the Nashville Predators 6-3 in Nashville. All right, folks, before we get too far into this one, I got to ask you right now, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button here on Dolany TV. We are under 490 subscribers to go to that big old 10,000 total. All right, enough about me. Let's get back to this hockey game. Jack Campbell, the starter tonight, and it was an ugly start for Jack Campbell. Not not in terms of the whole game. Not, not start as in he started the game and it was an ugly game. Start as in the first shot of the hockey game goes in on Jack Campbell, and oh my goodness, the anxiety levels in oil country up here, my friends, up over our heads. We're drowning in anxiety the way it's going to go tonight. Jack Campbell's allowed the first goal of the night, and of course it wasn't exactly a good one, and oh, oh no, 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 not another one of these nights. But don't you worry, the Oilers come storming back in that period, whether it be McDavid, whether it be Hyman, whether it be Drysaddle, that first period was enough to get us up to a 3-1 lead. And this is the thing. The Oilers had quite a few moments of this game where they definitely had a three or a two goal lead kind of racking up and getting the job done for them. And that was kind of the tale for the Oilers was able to stay ahead most of the night, not cost themselves a hockey game by getting into this one goal shenanigans for very long, I guess you could say, because there were one goal moments in this hockey game for the Oilers, but the two goal moments were much more important on an evening that they end up winning 6-3 over the Nashville Predators. And we'll just kind of go now to the scoring summary because I don't think I can adequately, without saying that Jack Campbell scared us off the start, but everything settled down and the Oilers glided to victory at the end. Uh, quite honestly, the scoring summary will, of course, dictate kind of where this story is going, all right? Period number one, as mentioned, a buck 15 in the Nashville Predators get their first shot on goal. Cody Glass to flex it for his second goal of the season off of Cody Ceci. Roman Yossi, Colton Sissons, the goals, right? It's a weak one that dribbles through Jack Campbell, and we are concerned because that did not look like it was going to be a good situation for the Oilers to be in. But nevertheless, here's the thing. Here's the thing about the Oilers the past 9, 10 games, whatever you want to say, right? The Oilers are 7-3 and three in their past 10, if I've got the math right, with the loss against Minnesota and the win tonight. So, of course, we're playing a winning brand of hockey. Here's the problem is, uh, well, the Oilers in that stretch have had some games where they've gotten down, but they haven't been out. Even last night, despite having a poor effort, the Oilers lost a one-goal hockey game. Jack and Louie made big-time mention of that throughout the broadcast tonight. So, right, down by one. Well, step on up, Zach Hyman. And it's a face-off win by Leon Dreisaitl. Connor McDavid gets it up to Evan Bouchard. Bouchard with a rocket of a slap pass down to the side of the net where Zach Hyman, that's what he does, baby, tips those pucks, makes those greasy plays, back of the net on Lankinen, and guess what? It's his 11th of the season to tie the hockey game. And then how about this? About six and a half minutes later, Zach Hyman on his 12th goal of the season. This one was a little bit more of a scrambly play, but Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl both draw assists, and Zach Hyman gets his second goal of the game. And suddenly, from with about what, five minutes and ten seconds left in the first period? We were on hat-trick watch. And then suddenly in that second period, we started on hat-trick watch for a whole nother reason. But for the Oilers then in this first period, with uh, the game kind of hanging there for the Predators to get back into, the Oilers get a power play late in the first period, and Leon Dreisettle 
draws the game to 3-1 with his rocket of a shot, victimizing Nashville for another goal this season, another goal over the past 10 games, his 20th of the season. Ryan Nugent Hopkins draws his 20th assist, and Tyson Berry goes out there and puts up another point in the column for the Edmonton Oilers after our discussion last night post game about having to trade Barry in case the Oilers want to make a move on the back end. All right. So, right, it's 3 1. Well, then the Predators, 3 22 into the first or second period, they cut it to, well, unfortunately, 3 2. So, Ryan Johansson from Philip Forsberg, Mark Jankowski, big whoop. Uh, here's the thing like I said, these periods where the Predators had it to a one-goal game. Didn't really last realistically all that long for stretches like it normally would when the Oilers give up a goal against, right? Then the other team keeps pushing, pushing, and eventually breaks the Oilers or the Oilers break through. This one took less than a minute to respond. Leon Dreisaitl scores his 21st, and it is an absolute beauty of a goal. How do you describe this? Chooses his foot speed, beats the defender clean, Wires home a shot that Lankinen wishes he would have had, but simply put for Leon Drysaddle, she's a missile, she's a goal, and she's a big one. Zach Hyman, his third point of the game, and Connor McDavid, by the way, also his third point of the game. So Connor McDavid will tally up the points after this game. Give me a minute. But uh, he had a pretty fantastic game while now up over, sorry, pardon me, to 59 points in 30 games this year is Connor McDavid. Dontre Fabro cuts it to... In one goal game again, just about midway through that second period from Yakov Trenin and Roman Yossi. So Yossi still has his kind of typical night against the Oilers. However, right, it lasts another nine minutes. That's it. And Connor McDavid on the power play with very little time to go in that second period. And I mean, guys, this was an absolute gem of a goal from Connor McDavid. Poor Jack Michaels was cut off having a conversation with Louis DeBrusque, and then all of a sudden, Connor McDavid turns on turbo mode, down the ice, scores the goal, and everyone, what? That happened? And yeah, it, it happened again. Like, Connor McDavid goes through three, four guys, not really as special as that New York Rangers goal, but still a very nice, beautiful goal. Cuts down right into the middle, wires at home. No chance for Lankinen. Drysdale draws his 29th assist of the season, so Drysdale now up to 51 points on the season because of something we'll get to in a moment. Tyson Berry draws his 17th assist of the year, and then it goes all the way for about 18 and a half minutes until Zach Hyman scores his hat-trick goal, his 13th of the season from Leon Drysdale and Cody Ceci, who draws his 5th assist of the season. And there you go. That's the scoring summary, right? This one, I think what I was trying to say as to the scoring summary describing how this one went, this one was a roller coaster, folks. A fun one for Oilers fans, but obviously started with the scare by Jack Campbell, who we'll get to in a moment. The Oilers didn't make it easy on themselves, taking four penalties in the first two periods. Brad Malone takes a sketchy high stick. It's all good, no cost against, and the Oilers able to get it going. But that was when that game could have gotten delicate there for the Oilers and back to 5-4. Didn't matter. Oilers power through. Penalty kill is 5-for-5. Five five. Special teams goes 7-for-7 seven seven realistically on the aggregate. You love to see it. It's fantastic for the Oilers, and it's a big-time win Overall, Now, of note, Pat Verbeek in the stands for the Anaheim Ducks, scouting more than likely Yessa Pugliarvi, who we spoke of pregame. Well, my friends, he got to see Yessa Pugliarvi play some good time on the top line this evening, and he looked good, right? Yessa Pugliarvi, when he's on the top line with Drysdale and McDavid, they make most players look good, and Yessa Pugliarvi held his own out there, and I think obviously was also rewarded with the hit of the game this evening. So there's a couple of things there, hopefully, that maybe something shakes out for Yessa, and he impressed a guy that came to watch him, and that's all that matters. But for Jack Campbell, talk about impressing us, right? Coming off that bum game against Minnesota to start the month, hasn't seen a start in 12 days, comes out there, shaky goal against to begin with, tipped, whatever you want to say, it is what it is. You can't be letting dribblers through you, I don't think. But either way, he ends up with a 9.06 save percentage on three goals against, which means despite the goals against and despite the lack of shots thereof to really increase that save percentage, he still decreases the goals against per game, still decreases the shots 
or the save or increases sorry the save percentage it's late at night i'm going to bed after this but there you go jack campbell gets the job done and guess what the Oilers goals against per game continues to go down yet again. It was kind of low entering tonight's game. Now, here's the thing. You go there after um, after this one, and the Oilers now have awarded win number 17 of the season, which, oh, by the way, is tied for third best in the Western Conference, which is actually, hold on, two wins less than the Toronto Maple Leafs on the season by the way, too, um, just as those Leafs fans that may still be joining us here. I just want to throw that back at you a little bit. But next up is St. Louis on the 15th. My friends, that's a game that I wish I could be making, but unfortunately a guy can't get out to work that early on a Thursday to make it up for a 7 o'clock game. That said, too, my friends, that's going to do it for me. The longest game review I've done in a while. But Jack Campbell back in the win column for the Edmonton Oilers and the Oilers back in the win column after a quick loss against the Minnesota Wild 2-1. And you think about this road trip scoring, how about that? Six goals allowing four, not a bad dealio to go 3-2, and two, technically speaking, over the average of two games. I'm Tyson, this stolen Stolen TV. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. If you are new, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And without further ado, I am going to go to bed. You guys have a great evening. Enjoy the win. We'll see you tomorrow.